This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I am Dan Aliash, back again with breaking news and a discussion of the role of posterior wall isolation and ablation of persistent atrial fibrillation. Part one focused on the CAPLA study as presented by Peter Kistler at this year's ESC. Part two focused on the hybrid convergent procedure and the converged trial as, as published by Dave Delergio and Cirque P. Today, now we, we will be discussing the race AF and substrate-based ablation. And um, as our discussants, I'd like to welcome back Dr. Dave Delergio of Emory University School of Medicine. Welcome. Thank you, Daniel. And again, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Peter Kistler of Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, Australia. To further, you know, throw a wrench into our discussion, you know, as I, I was preparing to do this talk uh, with you all, th this paper came out, the ERACE, ERACE AF trial. You know, 324 patients randomized to a, a within persistent atrial fibrillation to a substrate-based ablation approach versus PBI. And, um, you know, their findings were, again, you, you described a nice summary of the data to date, but their, their, their findings were pretty interesting and almost astounding. Um, you know, you had to dig in to the supplementary materials to really kind of see what it means to do substrate ablation from their perspective. They're doing high power uh, ablation, 40 to 50 watts. And additionally, they're doing, uh, if they're doing a posterior wall, they're getting 10 volts at two milliseconds exit block. And additionally, they commented on the locations of the substrates. And I found this to be pretty interesting because, you know, I, I would say in my practice, not necessarily reflective, but the most common low voltage substrate as defined by 0.2, less than 0.2 millivolts was on the septum, followed by the posterior wall, followed by the anterior wall. And so, you know, I, I guess I'll put the question, you know, first to Peter, uh, kind of what's your interpretation of a race AF and, and what do you think it adds to the evidence base? Yeah, I think firstly, really important study and, and congratulations to the, um, the race AF authors. Um, I suppose I immediately compared it with DCAF2 and thought, why is, why is one study positive and the other negative when we think about addressing substrate? Somewhat similar designs in PBI only versus PBI plus targeting substrate, but very different tools, one using MRI, the other using voltage mapping. What I really liked about a race AF is that they had a clear EP endpoint for whatever they were going to do. So if they found low voltage on the posterior wall, they isolated the posterior wall. If they found it anteriorly, then they did a line through there and had to um, confirm bidirectional block. I think the reservations that people have brought up about a race AF is that only one third of the patients actually had substrate. And therefore, the difference was powered by just the one third of of, of patients but that's not but that you know can be flipped the other way and saying well look if you identify that people have a normal voltage map then maybe pvi alone is is enough um so I, I think really important useful study but it'd be nice to replicate this with dare i say bigger numbers but these studies are really difficult to do as i found out with kaplan and dave your thoughts um, I also read this paper with interest, and I, 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 like you, I noticed that most of the meat is in the supplementary material as opposed to the primary um, uh, paper, and I guess that was an editorial decision, but I, I was um, surprised, I think, because this trial looks to me very much like the stable SR2 trial uh, recently published in Jack EP where voltage mapping was used at, to guide, and then those areas were either isolated or homogenized, and there was no difference. And those patients who did have low voltage uh, in these sort of not too advanced persistent AFib populations, I think they're very similar populations, uh, they did worse if there was uh, voltage, abnormal voltage areas present. So in this paper, it seems like this large difference, relatively large difference, was driven by the fact that they had abnormal substrate, whereas the opposite was found in stable SR2, which was those patients who had abnormal substrate did worse 
regardless of approach. So it's a, um, it's kind of a, a, a it's hard to uh, rectify the two. Uh, and that will be really good discussion to get the authors up uh, from the two and have a nice open debate, maybe at the next heart rhythm meetings. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, um, I'll put one final question out there. The future of, uh, you know, understanding the role of the posterior wall. Um, Peter, first off, fantastic contribution with Kapla. Dave, also fantastic co uh, contribution. Uh, but Peter, comments on where you think the future is for posterior wall. Where we, what do we need to do to, to study its role? Um, I, well, I, I think firstly, I think we're going to be thinking about AF in three ways. Paroxysmal, let's call it early persistent and long-standing persistent. And I think we're starting to fill in the gaps on those three. I think posterior wall isolation um, potentially still has a significant role in long-standing persistent. And I think more and more what we're seeing is patients coming back with recurrent AF in the presence of enduring pulmonary vein isolation or where you do, do see substrate on the posterior wall. And Dave? I think I agree with Peter. I would say that addition of posterior wall isolation is not warranted in most patients with persistent atrial fibrillation. There just probably is not enough um, additive benefit, and that's why it looks like a wash in Kapla, in my opinion. I do think that um, an empiric approach to posterior walls I, while isolation is proven in long-standing persistent patients. And until we have a better endocardial way to do that, I think there is a role for epicardial ablation in selected patients. Wonderful. Well, <laughs> thank you all for your uh, contributions to this, this field. And also congratulations to the Erase AF authors. And thank you all for tuning in to Heart Rhythm TV.